Here's the fourth part of making a catsuit, pinning up and cutting out. Pinning keeps layers together so they can be handled at the same time, for cutting out the pattern or for sewing the fabric together. To pin the pattern to the fabric, push the pin in at an angle, lift the point by twisting it at the head, then push it through to the top, leaving about the same amount of pin showing on either side. Pat the hump or pull its sides gently to flatten it somewhat. Mind your fingers with this. You shouldn't need a thimble with thin soft fabric like velour or lycra, but you may want to use one if you find you're stabbing yourself and want protection. Pin parallel to the pattern perimeter, spaced by about 3 inches along a straight line or closer around a curve, and a little inside the line so your scissors won't be scraping the pins. I pin around all the pieces before I start cutting out, so I can be sure the pattern pieces are straight and so I can see the fabric isn't too wrinkled. Don't mind a little wrinkling, but nothing excessive. So that's the inside arm piece for the origami suit. If you're making a zipped suit, you don't need this bit. Make sure all the pieces are aligned properly and that the velvet or design, if you're using velvet or printed cloth, is running in the correct direction for the way you've laid the pieces out. I pin the pieces mostly from one end to the other because I find this helps reduce wrinkles. The feet get extra pins because they have sharper curves. Having pinned it all, now we cut out, carefully following the pattern line. If you're making an origami suit, then you should have a vertical slit marked at the bottom of the V between the raglan curves. Cut in by a few inches, that's where the elastic across the back will end. It's best if you arrange for the top blade of the scissors to be further from you than the bottom blade, so you can see the line you're following. Cut carefully and try to avoid the very point of the scissors for cutting. There's less control there and the cut may jump forward. Remember, you can repin as much as you like, but once you've cut, it's hard to correct a mistake. Notice I fold the excess away from the cut line where I can. I find this makes the fabric easier to control and hence easier to cut. When I reach the bottom, I cut away from the pattern. I'll start a new cut from the crotch shortly. Here I'm widening the crotch slit to 5mm on either side of the fold, with a semicircle at the top and rounding at the bottom corners. This helps reduce stress at the top in the final sewn garment. Once cut out, make small snips in along the notch marks. These mark vertical alignment for the edges for when you're pinning to make seams. A few on either side of the leg and a couple up the back. I've marked the blade of my scissors with 5mm from the tip just to help me not to notch too deeply by mistake. So that's the body cut out. I fold it loosely, still pin, and set it aside. Here I'm cutting out the sole piece. I shouldn't really cut at such awkward angles. I should walk around the table, but I didn't want to knock anything over while filming. You'll see me cutting in a similarly cack-handed way later on, but don't copy me doing that. And so to the sleeve. At the shoulder V I cut across the top so I can cut the V out more easily once the piece is free from the rest of the fabric. You'll later be sewing the V together, and if you're making an origami suit, you'll sew some of the half sleeve piece into the V too. Trim carefully down both sides of the sleeve. At the wrist I leave a blob of fabric in case I want to add gloves. I plan to make another video covering gloves and adding a hood once I finish the next video about sewing the suit together. Here I'm trimming the half sleeve piece for the origami suit. You don't need this for the zipped suit. This will go inside the outer sleeve we just cut. The upper back piece, which I should probably call the yoke, should have been cut on a fold, but I decided to cut two half pieces and sew them together down the middle. So I'm cutting 5mm further from the fold pattern line. That 5mm will turn into the seam. So here we come to the change I left out of the last video, relating only to the origami suit, trimming the inside neckline. Mark the point on the main sleeve's V on the inner half sleeve. Lay the inner half sleeve so the lower end of its raglan curve is aligned with the corresponding raglan curve of the main body. Observe the vertical line up from the elastic slash. That dirty great arrow already on my piece shows where the V of the full sleeve ended and should be in about the same place as the vertical from the slash. Turn the half sleeve so the neckline ends of the raglan curves match, and then draw a line perpendicular to the body's back line, 
right across both pieces. My line's already drawn because I was trying to remember how this worked. Here I'm showing you how the yoke piece will overlap the back piece and demonstrating that there's about 4 inches of overlap and about an inch gap above and below the underarm line. Now simply cut the extra off along the line marked. Obviously this should have been done while preparing the pattern just as I should have marked all the notches along the raglan curves. I'll do that now. You need these notches for both the zipped and origami suits. Lay the matching raglan curves against each other then mark notches on them just below the bend. Two notches for the back sleeve seam, one notch for the front sleeve seam, and mark a couple of notches along the long edges of the sleeve. Now cut those notches, no more than 5mm in from the edge, but being careful to notch both layers of fabric. Notch the raglan curves too. That's it for cutting out. The next video will cover sewing the final suit, including the casings, the thin rectangular strips sewn along one edge that hold the elastic and form the collar.